I was a regional official and I worked for the GMB for 12 years after a couple of years being a shop steward. For the first two years that I worked for the GMB, uh, I was sexually abused and psychologically abused by a colleague. I had the support of my line manager um, at the time who did not have the full story. He did everything he could to support me um, and would say, come on, what would you tell a member to do? What would you tell a member to do? I had good friends in the London region at the GMB who also could see with their own eyes some of what was happening and also tried to encourage me to, to raise a complaint, but it just didn't feel possible. I ended up leaving the GMB because of a, a, a sexual attack in a workplace from one of the branch secretaries, which kind of triggered the whole thing. So I had, I had a breakdown uh, nearly a year away from work um, and I realised that I couldn't go back. Some expectations for TSSA were that things would be different. They had a very active equalities agenda. It seemed like a, a fresh new opportunity when I started there. A Christmas party in 2018, went for a meal. There was a lot of drinking, a lot of Christmas spirit, if you like. Um, and then in one of the pubs later on, the general secretary came over to me put his arm over my front and asked to kiss me. I said to him, you're my boss. And he, he went away, he was taken away by other colleagues, but then he came back over and said, I'm being told I'm not allowed to kiss you. Do you want to go outside? Another colleague came over and we went off to the, to the ladies' loos to, to stand in there. Um, and when I got back, he had gone. After a lot of deliberation, discussing it with my partner at the time, um, I decided to raise a complaint. I was invited to use a new part of TSSA policy, which was a, a form of mediation, um, rather than using the grievance procedure, uh, which I really regret now. I should have raised a grievance and had it investigated as a grievance. We met in Manchester. He was accompanied by someone from HR. I was accompanied by my GMB rep. He looked me in the eye and he said to me, I don't remember doing this, but I know that I did do it because you say that I did it. I was very drunk. I don't remember anything. I know that isn't an excuse. It won't happen again. He said, sorry again. And we shook hands and he left the room. And I thought that will be enough. You know, I, I can keep my job because that had been a discussion with the people I'd taken advice from. Am I likely to keep my job if I raise this? Um, I was told that it had happened a lot of times before, that if I did raise a complaint, I would be the first woman to do so. Six months after the incident at the Christmas party, a whole lot of us were in Glasgow for a network rail event where there was a meal on the first night. I was sitting at a table opposite a colleague of mine and she said to me, Manuel, he's really staring at you. So I looked over at him and he was really staring at me. We all ended up back in the hotel bar where Manuela was again, extremely drunk, and followed me around the room. Um, stood behind me saying, hey, hey, how are you? To the point where two other colleagues came over, pretended that I smoke and said, do you want to come outside with us for a cigarette? I said at the time, why, why aren't people joining together and organising on this issue? This is clearly a collective workplace matter. The response I got was, nobody wants to lose their job. There'll be questions raised over your performance. That's what happened to me and that's what's happening to another colleague right now. I had mental health issues. So I had complex PTSD and panic disorder when I left the GMB. Um, that was under, under a certain amount of control when I started at the TSSA, but the incident with Manuel triggered it again and I started to struggle with the symptoms of com complex PTSD. So flashbacks, fatigue, depression, anxiety, um, irrational thoughts. I was at a colleague's house following a night in the pub with Frank Ward and Lorraine Ward. She'd overheard a conversation between me and Luke Chester where I was saying to him that the some of the reps that we were working with were sexist um, and some of them were racist and that I was finding that really unacceptable. Um, so her way of dealing with that was to say, well, what are your ideas? So we'd all had lots to drink. Uh, we'd been having a good time. Suddenly the atmosphere was hostile and I was under the, under the spotlight. I was deep in performance management at this point. So my situation was pressurized to say the least. 
I drank a lot that night and missed my train. Luke Chester said it was okay to stay at his house as I had before without incident. We were we were kind of pals and drinking buddies. But when we got to his house that night, I was talking to him about what had just happened with Lorraine Ward and saying, do you think it's going to be okay? You know, I'm I'm really worried now. And he just said, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice now. I think you're broken. You need to get your shit together. The reps don't want to work with you because you're crap. And then he, he, he said, look, I'm not, um, I'm not a nasty guy. When my girlfriend gives me a blowjob, I put a pillow under her knees. And then he said, I am not trying to get a blowjob here. But if you can show me that you care about this union, I can take your problems away. He was threatening me and he was, he was gaslighting me. Then I got word that my line manager was leaving our team and that there would be a new line manager. And as soon as I heard that, my heart fell through the floor because I knew that Luke Chester was going to go for that job and I knew that he was going to get it. And I knew that he was going to become my line manager and all of those things happened. My mental health just, you know, plummeted. I I couldn't function. I couldn't stop crying. So I called in sick. Um, I had to call him to call in sick. And then later that day, I got a letter inviting me to a stage three capability hearing. I just thought, I have, you know, this isn't fair. I'm going to get sacked at that meeting and I need to raise a grievance. So I raised a grievance about the whole lot, about everything that had happened. Most of my witnesses weren't contacted. Some of the witnesses who were spoke, spoken to lied. Following that incident at the Christmas party in 2018, I was told three times by line, my line manager that there was a package on the table for me an exit package, should I ever wish to discuss it. Last year, 2021, I realised that it was time to discuss that package and I was told that there was no such thing and that that had never been said to me. Eventually, through a series of meetings, we managed to to come to an agreement over an amount of money that would be paid to me. Um, And to have that money paid to me, I would sign an agreement um, agreeing not to speak, not to speak ill of TSSA in public, basically not to talk about what had happened. A lot of talented women have been lost to the trade union and labour movement. A lot of women who had a lot of things to offer aren't there anymore because they've been mobbed out by misogynistic abuse. The thing that we need to do is unfortunate but very obvious. We need to speak about it and do what we would tell our members to do. This is a collective workplace issue It is ruining people's lives. It's leaving people without their jobs. So for God's sake, we need to come together and speak out about it and insist that it ends and get rid of the perpetrators.